How's it going everyone? Andrew Robinson here, back at it with another Max MSP tutorial video. In this video, we are talking about preset again. This is part two, and I am going to be answering some of your questions that I got asked on the last video. I did get asked a lot of questions, actually. We are also going to talk about some of the attributes in Patter that make it even more versatile. And let's just just right into it, shall we? First things first, the first question I got asked, does Patter work with VSTs? And the answer is yes, yes it does. In case you don't know, a VST is basically an audio plugin. Max comes with a bunch of built-in audio plugins. If you click this plugin icon down here on the left side window, uh, you'll see that there are a lot of audio plugins. I might have some here that you don't see. You might have some that I can't see. It all depends on how into audio you are, but you can just take any one of these basic built-in plugins. I'm going to use granular to go, drag and drop that into your patch, and you're going to see it's basically going to create this B patcher object that is this audio plugin. And we could set all of these. It doesn't really matter. An important question, how, how do we get the patter storage system to work with our VST presets? It's actually pretty easy. You just need one extra object. Rather than using patter, we need to use the auto patter object, which you see it says it exposes multiple objects to the patter system. Basically, all this is going to do is it's going to look at every single object in our patch and it's going to try to expose that to our patter storage system. And it does expose the internal aspects of this VST plugin. So we can just create a patter storage object now and we can say store one just like we did in the last video and we'll store that and then we'll just change these settings to something else it doesn't really matter to me what these are right now this is just you know to show you that it's going to work um so we'll do that we'll do that we'll just make everything the opposite of what it was basically oh i just click randomize <laughs> anyways okay that could be our uh preset too it's fine we're gonna copy the message we're gonna say store two and now that we have two of them stored we can flip between them as it goes, we'll just send the recall one and recall two message to the powder storage object as well. And if I lock the patch, click on that, there we go. That was our preset one and it worked just like that. And if we click recall two, it worked just like that. So you can get powder storage to save and store presets of your VSTs. You just need to include this auto patter object because that is what is exposing all these internal parameters of this VST to the patter storage system. So that's pretty important. Next thing we're going to talk about is actually something that I think is very, very important to talk about. And that is the subscribe mode function of patter and patter storage. So we have this patter storage down here with our VST that, you know, we can flip between. Um, but say we wanted something else. Say, you know, we had a matrix control object up here. We do love this object. And, you know, we wanted that to be one preset or something, you know, we wanted this to be our other preset for some reason. Um, as I mentioned in the last video, you can only have one pattern storage object per patch level because anything, if we, if anything we do, if we patch a pattern into this object, we'll give it the name grid. Uh, if we patch that into here and then hit the store one and then, you know, change this and hit store two, it's going to expose this object and this object to this pattern storage system. You can even double click on the pattern storage window right now and see we do have both. We have AMXD, which is our VST down here, and we have pattern grid up here. So both of these are exposed to the pattern storage system. But what if you wanted to recall the presets for these objects independently of one another? You don't want this preset to change when you're trying to change this preset and vice versa. It, how do you do that on the similar patch level? That is actually where the subscribe mode function comes in handy. If you give a pattern storage object the attribute at subscribe mode one, it is now only going to look for a list of specified pattern names that you give to it through the subscribe message. So what, what does that mean? Well, basically you create a message, you say subscribe and you see it'll pop up if you're creating it close to the batter storage object and it's uh, adds a client to the subscription. So basically, like I said, that's just the pattern name. So we could say subscribe grid in this message. And real fast, before I click this message and send it through, let's double click on the pattern storage object. You'll see there's nothing in here now. This pattern storage object does not see this VST over here and it doesn't see the grid. 
and that's because it needs that list of patter names defined by the subscribe message in order to be populated into the patter storage and have everything saved and recalled. So if we just close that real quick and we click that subscribe grid message now, we just sent that message into the patter storage and it's still not showing up. And the actual, <laughs> the fun reason for that is because um, every patter storage object in our patch now needs to have this setting. So we have this one down here um, and it's actually still taking the grid object. And not only that, but we can see it's actually even taking the patter storage object. Um, but we don't want that. We need, we need everything to now be specified using this subscribe mode attribute. So that's totally okay. Um, so we'll say subscribe mode one. And it's gonna pop up with this because we had some presets saved. We don't actually need to save those though. Um, now, if we click this message, subscribe grid, and we double click batter, you'll see grid is in this patter storage object, but it's not down here in this patter storage object. So that works perfectly. We could now copy all of this up here for a sec, um, patch those in, and say store one, and then you know highlight all of these and say store two, and then you know recall one, recall two, and you'll see I'm clicking these, and it is working. We are recalling these presets, but nothing's happening down here anymore, and that's because this pattern storage is only looking at this pattern object, or what other, any, any pattern objects we would try to send to this pattern storage object through that subscribe message. So let's send one down to this pattern storage object now. Um, this, as we saw, was called AMXD tilde. That is the scripting name of this object. And it was given that scripting name when we created this auto pattern object. So we can actually use the scripting name of this object as well. It doesn't have to be the name of the pattern object. So we can say subscribe amxd tilde. Send that to the pattern storage object, uh, lock the patch and click it. And if we double click pattern storage, you'll see it's in there now, perfect. So we can once again, you know, store this as preset one. I'm just gonna click that randomize. So we have it set random preset for two. And then we can now recall between those presets again, independently from this one up here. So that's awesome that we can now do this. And so now you can have multiple pattern storage objects in one patch, in the same patch window and store different things, recall them at different times, do interpolation on them independently. Um, back in that last video, you know, one of the examples I talked about was trying to create like a color fade thing. If you want your pattern storage object interpolation recall just to do that color fade, you can, you can have it specified that way using the subscribe mode attribute. And you can then use other pattern storages for other things. And that's just pretty neat that that works that way. The one thing I am going to point out before we get too deep into other stuff is that interpolation feature that we talked about in that last video um, where you give the recall message one to the two states that you're trying to interpolate between and then a third value that is the mix of those two states that will not work on VSTs unfortunately. You cannot interpolate on these VSTs. Sorry, it's just the way it is unfortunately. With that out of the way and this talked about, we're gonna move right on to the next question, which is, can Patter work in Max 4 Live? And the answer is also yes, you can get Patter to work in Max 4 Live. Um, I'm gonna copy this example up here real quick. I'm just gonna change this name to M4L, which stand, can stand for Max 4 Live. We'll change the subscribe message from grid to M4L send that through that's here um, actually we should not copy and paste that you see it copy and pasted the grid um, over as well so that's actually not a good idea let's be careful about that we're just going to create a blank new pattern storage object So we can, in fact, do this on Max for Live. Um, what is Max for Live? Max for Live is actually a feature of Ableton. Let me, in fact, just open Ableton up um, and show this working. As I was saying, Max for Live is a feature of Ableton where you can create different Max patch instruments directly in the Ableton environment. So if you just take something like Max instrument, drag and drop it over, 
into a blank channel. We'll see we have a new Max instrument thing down here. You can click this cool little icon and it's going to open up our Max patching environment. You can see it looks basically the exact same as it does in Max, just a little you know, color difference and this cool little line to show you where it's gonna show the visual aspect of your plugin that you build. And otherwise, I am pretty sure that everything you can do in Max, you can do in Max for live. I'm pretty sure it has every single component. So we can, for our example, let's, um, let's talk about this. Let's copy and paste this into our new Max for live device. And it'll be right there. Now, the important thing to know, the, app, the super important thing to know, um, I'm gonna change that message first. This is not the important thing to know, but I'm gonna change that to a load mess so it um, automatically sends it out. When we cr uh, load in this device, um, the important thing to know is if you are using Patter in Max for Live, there is one additional step that you need to do in order to make this whole system work. And that is you need to go into your object that you are trying to have talk to the pattern storage object system. In this example, that's our matrix control object because it's what our pattern is patched into and bound to. If we open up the inspector for this object, which you can do either by hitting command I or clicking this I icon over here, you can scroll down to where it says parameter and you see there's this option parameter mode enabled. This needs to be turned on in order for this to work in Max for Live. If that is not turned on, it's not gonna work. And that's just the way it is. You have to turn parameter mode enabled on in order for pattern objects to do their thing in Max for Live. But once you do that, you should be able to just save this. Uh, I'm gonna just save this as Max for Live uh, pattern example, and we'll save that, and we can close this now, and you'll see um, everything we kept in that code is now saved into this object, and um, we can set some of this. I, it doesn't really matter what this is right now. We're going to first make sure, okay, it is in our pattern storage thing, so the subscribe mode one, subscribe, uh, MFF. L still worked. We'll say store one now, and then we'll highlight some more, and we'll say store two, and recall one, recall two. So there you go, it is working. And again, all you gotta remember to do is turn that parameter mode enabled attribute on for the object that you are trying to save and recall. Super easy still, super straightforward. Just remember that one extra step. And you can do patter stuff in Max for Live as well. So that's super useful. Now, um, back to our regular Max patch. Uh, we still have a couple more attributes to talk about. Um, things that you might find to be very handy in some use cases of Patter. First one that we need to talk about is the invisible attribute. And that is actually on the Patter object itself. So first, let's create some float number boxes. We're gonna create a Patter and we'll call this scene. And we'll call this unseen. And we'll create a new pattern storage object. And again, because we have been doing this subscribe mode attribute thing, we have to do that for this one as well. So we'll say at subscribe mode one. And oh, gotta patch that into that number box. Can't forget that. That's an important step. And as we saw in the Max for Live example, I'm just now instead going to create a load mess object say scene unseen oh I gotta say subscribe it needs the message in order to know what we're doing with these names and we're gonna say subscribe scene uh, unseen patch that in and then you can lock the patch and double click it and it's the same thing as clicking a message box uh, you'll see that the message still gets sent out through this patch cord and if you click this window you'll see these are both seen seen and unseen are seen by the pattern store system but um, if we wanted to specify a certain pattern not to be seen by pattern storage there may be a reason you need to do that you can do that with the at invisible attribute and if you set at invisible one it will no longer be exposed to the pattern storage system no matter what um so you do that and now we can double click in this pattern storage and you see unseen is no longer seen 
um, it is not affected by this pad or storage object anymore. You could think of it as kind of the opposite of the subscribe mode feature. Rather than specifying everything we want to include in our pad or storage, we're just gonna specify one thing maybe we don't want to include. Uh, depending on your patch, it may be much quicker to do it that way than to do it uh, using the subscribe mode way, especially if you only have one pad or storage object that you're using. Neat other feature of pad or storage is we have, or pad or, is uh, the at initial attribute, which works basically the same way as load mess. Um, we're gonna just give patter a name, a uh, big number, and we'll say at initial, some kind of big number, 10,000, I guess. And if we patch that into that, um, we need to give this, it has a scripting name. And that's, yeah, that's really it. It's basically just you're saying start at this initial value, and this could be super useful for certain use cases. Um, like, especially if you are doing stuff in Max for Live, and maybe you're building an instrument where you want to have these presets going with patter, um, but you also want it to load in in some sort of default setting state, just so it's ready to go right out of the box for somebody to play with. The last, the last attribute I wanna talk about is greedy. Um, greedy is a patter storage attribute, um, and what that does is it basically exposes everything to that pattern storage object. Um, so right now, there's nothing in this window, um, and that's also because we haven't done the subscribe thing, but Greedy doesn't care about that. If we just say at Greedy1, it's going to now just be greedy and take everything into it. And if we double click on this pattern storage object, you'll see everything is being exposed to this one pattern storage now, including our other patter storage objects. Um, and the only thing that is not exposed to this right now is our unseen patter with that invisible one attribute. So that is very important to keep in mind. At greedy one in patter storage is going to expose everything to this patter storage object. Even if these were buried deep in sub patches, they could be sub patches within sub patches within pa sub patches and patter storage at greedy one is still going to be able to find it. The only thing it won't find is a pattern marked at invisible one. So very important to keep that in mind. Basically, yeah, this just exposes everything to this singular pattern storage system, which is pretty valuable for a lot of different use cases as well. Like maybe, you know, you have a, a sub patch that has a pattern storage system in place and you're doing some recall and interpolation stuff in there, but then also in your main max patch window, you want to also be able to control that stuff. You can do it using the pattern storage at greedy one, still get into that sub patch and do it that way. It's just, it's all up to you. It might work it might be necessary in your use case. And I think I'm gonna end the video there because we covered a lot of different random things, um, but hopefully this helps expand your understanding of the patter and patter storage object, and you see ways in which these new features could be really, really useful, especially the subscribe mode feature and these questions about, can you use patter on VSTs and can you use it in Max for Live? Yes everything is possible. And that's it. So hopefully you guys learned something. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe because that's how I know best that you did. And if there are any questions or comments, please feel free to leave that in the comment section down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.